And as you do, in, do what you need to do to finish getting your gifts together this morning, I want to make a quick reminder that immediately following the service today, uh, on your way out, if you're a part of the Encore team, don't forget, there's something set up for you inside the cafe. So there's an Encore meeting, and Pastor Alyssa is going to be there sharing about missions and about her call. So if you haven't connected with the Encore and you're think, thinking about it, today would be a great day to go because there's food and all kinds of stuff involved in that. All right? I'm going to jump right into our series, our message, week five of Word and Power Church. Who's been enjoying this series? All right, about half of you, that's pretty good. 50%, I think we're doing good when 50% of the church gets into a message. You know, one of the things that I've been loving about this is the conversations I've been having with people. A lot of people have bought the book. Uh, the book is a little bit older, so there's some things in it that have changed and, and gone beyond what the book is. But it's been great conversation starters of, okay, I, I read this, tell me about this. I read this, what do you think about this? So if you haven't got the book or you're interested in getting that book or maybe you're not able to get that book because of finances, would you come talk to me? We'd love to be able to get a copy of that book in your hands because it is a substantial piece to the puzzle that we're putting together as a church. So let's jump into week five of the the Word Empowered Church, what God's faithfulness is for the church. Let me pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. God, I was overwhelmed today coming into the building and feeling your tangible peace and your tangible presence in this place. Lord, there's so many reasons in my own personal life and the world that I'm observing that's trying to steal those moments of peace away from me. And I'm grateful, Lord, that in you is peace. You are peace. It's not just an attribute of you. It's who you are. And Lord, this morning, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that they would receive your peace right now. They would receive the gift of your peace in our life. Lord, thank you. Thank you for moving mountains for us. Thank you for moving through shadows and places we thought we were hiding. Lord, thank you for coming to the top of the mountain and us finding you. Lord, thank you that there's no place we can go in heaven or on earth where you're not there. So Lord, this morning, we want to thank you as a church for your peace and your active presence in our life. And we give you glory for that in Jesus' name. So I want to jump right into today's message. Today's message is going to be in two parts. I want to give you a bit of a teaching about what we're talking about today. And then we're also going to be doing something collectively as a congregation. Now, I don't want that to freak you out and have you run out the door. But there's going to be some participatory worship here today. We've talked about this since day one. That one of the things that make a word and power church, a church that's full of word and power, is that the congregation does more than just arrives on Sunday. There's something deep that happens within us that causes us to step out and express those things. So what I'd like to do this morning is I want to, uh, in, even though it's called prayer and worship this morning, I want to start with the word worship. So I look at the word worship, and there's, there's some things that stir up in me. And I, I think of the word worship and what we've put it in a box to be, which is the songs that we sing on a Sunday morning when we gather together. And when I look up the original Greek wording used in the New Testament of worship, it's to bow down, to submit to the Lord. And it's not just a once a week thing. It actually is something that percolates inside us in a deep way. It's something that changes us so much on the inside that we can't help but live that on the outside. So when we talk about worship, even though oftentimes we talk about corporate worship or gathering together as a church and doing all those things that we do that make a Sunday morning special, the worship that I'm talking about today and the worship that the scripture that I'm just about ready to share is referring to is us individually being moved and filled by the Spirit of God so much so that we're not the same. Now, I know many of you have been in church for a very long time, and I love that. I'm going on 30 years serving the Lord, and I love every bit of it. But maybe you're a little bit like me, that there's some times, some years, some months, some weeks where you just attend. And you come into a church service, and you leave the same, and there's no transformation. We can find many things together on a Sunday morning, including community, including good coffee in Washington State. That's a huge part of church here in Washington State. Uh, we can find now our spiritual formation classes in the morning, which are going really well, where we can dig into the word of God deeply in a more intimate setting. We can sit on one side of the building because another person is sitting on the other side of the building. There's all things that we can experience on a Sunday morning, but there's one thing that we should all do. When we come to worship together collectively, 
We cannot forget the importance of us coming ourselves with a spirit of expectancy for what God's going to do in us and through us and around us. A word and power church is moved by individuals that are ready for God to use them in a way they never thought was possible. And when we gather together in community, that is magnified by how many people are in the room. It makes a huge difference who you are when you come into this place, what you carry, what you bring. And if you come in on a Sunday morning and you're not in a good place, it shouldn't keep you away. You should be coming to this place to believe that God is gonna change you and move you into a different spot in your life. So when we talk about worship, yes, it's all the things we do on a Sunday morning, but individually, it's you coming ready and expectant for God to do something in you that will change you forever. Isn't it amazing that we serve a supernatural God that naturally moves in our life? He drew, him, drew us to himself. He caused us to become free of all the things that may have hindered us. And now he's placed us in a family, a church, to be used at a level that we never thought was possible. He's restoring us. He's healing us. He's flooding us with hope and giving us purpose. And when we come believing those things and expecting those things, the atmosphere in the room literally changes. When you come believing God for those things, God saying the question, God, what are you going to do next today? That one person that visits, that one person that comes with a burden, we almost give God a deeper permission to move in that person's life. The body of Christ flows together. And when one of us weeps, we weep for that person. When someone's full of joy, we give joy to that person. This is what happens in the body of Christ. So let me read a scripture to you that may be familiar, but I believe it sums up what we're trying to talk about this morning in John 4, verses 23. This is Jesus speaking. The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. When we worship the Lord in spirit, we recognize, we recognize that spirit calling unto spirit, this isn't something we're doing on our own. God has dropped a burden in us to live a lifestyle of surrender and obedience and allowing him to change us into the kind of people that he wants us to be. When we allow the spirit of God to move in us more and more every day, we become more and more like Jesus. And I don't know about you, I hope you can echo this statement. For me, this is all about Jesus. I wanna become more like him, I wanna behave more like him, I wanna treat people, people more like he treated people. I wanna understand who he needs and wants me to be on this earth. And when I worship him in spirit and in truth, I recognize that. I think through those things. And when, I, when the scripture talks about us worshiping him in truth, Wherever we are today, whatever we've brought into this room, whatever we're going through, whether it's the peak of our life or the deepest valley of our life, it's in those moments of truth that we need to learn to worship him. That every breath inside us learns to praise the Lord, even in the worst times and even in the best times. Through the years, I've seen those two areas rob people's Christianity the most. When they're going through the valley experience, they move away from God because they think he's abandoned them. When they're going through their peak experience, they move away from God because they think that they've done it on their own. And both areas rob us of worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. So when we worship him and ponder this scripture and listen to the words of Jesus, this is where a word and power church resides. Learning to worship the Lord in spirit and truth as individuals believing that every day we serve the Lord can be a day where we transform, where we can change and become more like Jesus. I wanna share three brief things with you about what false worship might be to challenge us this morning. False worship chooses only part of the truth. What I mean by that is when we falsely worship the Lord, there's parts of the truth that we isolate from the others. We might say that we love the Lord but someone in our world and our life irritates us and we hate them. Those two cannot exist together. When we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, 
there's a different way that we walk out our life. False worship only gives part of itself to the Lord. It isolates certain areas. That's not true worship. And false worship also bases itself on superstition. There isn't a deep understanding of who you are in Christ, so it becomes very superstitious. And you begin to think that things are happening because of one thing or another. We have to be grounded in the word of God. That's the word part of the word and power church. And we have to be filled with the spirit and moving in his power. The next part that I want to talk about this morning is the first part of today's message, which is prayer. Prayer has always been a significant part of my world and my life. And when I think about prayer, I looked up this simple definition. And maybe this will help us give context to what our message is today. It goes like this. In Christianity, prayer is a way to communicate with God. And many Christians believe that God provides guidance and grace through prayer. Christians may pray to praise God, confess their sins, thank God, or ask for needs and desires. The most basic definition of prayer is talking with God. Prayer is not meditation or passive reflection, although it can be. So that the primary reason that we pray is to communicate with our Lord and our Savior. It's a direct address to God. Prayer is the primary way for the believer in Jesus Christ to communicate their emotions and desires with God and to fellowship with God. Prayer can be audible and silent, private or public, formal or informal. All prayer must be offered in faith, James 1.6, in the name of the Lord Jesus, John 6.23, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 8.26. The history of prayer, we can date it back 5,000 years ago. And if you're a student of religions in the world today, almost every religion based in earth prays to some degree or another. There's a purpose behind prayer, and it's intended to develop us as a human being. Form of prayer can be in a group or alone. It can be in many forms, including hymns, incantations, or spontaneous utterances. In some cultures, wrap ritual around prayer where you have to do a certain thing at a certain day at a certain time, doing a certain thing during that time. There's also some scientific study that I was researching uh, that I don't have time to go into today where scientists are looking into the power of prayer in individuals' lives and how we can actually see the brain chemistry of an individual change because they choose to take time to pray. When I think of prayer... There's 10 scriptures that I want to share with you just really briefly. 10 scriptures that I pray over this church often. 10 scriptures that I use in my own walk when I think of each of you. Because I believe these are prayers that can change us as individuals and as a church. Prayer brings life to people. And our God, our Father in heaven, is the author of life. He's the author of peace. He's the author of unity. He's the author of hope. He's the author of a future. He's not an author of confusion and bitterness and separation. The Lord would never speak those things about you or me. So when we choose to pray, when we choose to step out in our world and our life and to express ourselves the way that the Lord has called us to, these are some of the scriptures that we can use. 2 Timothy 4.2, we need to pray that the church will preach the word of God without apology. Colossians 4.2, we need to pray that the church would be devoted to prayer. Acts 4.12 says that we need to pray the church will boldly share Jesus as the only hope of salvation in the world. John 4.24, we need to pray that the church will worship God in spirit and in truth. 1 Peter 5, 2 through 3 says, we need to pray that our leaders will serve humbly as godly examples to all. Five more quick ones. Colossians 1, 28 and 29. We need to pray that the church will labor to present everyone mature in Christ. And you all know that's one of our values here. Disciples making disciples. That deep transformation happens within a community and it's happening here in our church. 
Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Pray that more workers step up to faithfully serve the Lord. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 says this. We need to pray our leaders equip the saints for the work of the ministry. It's an important one. Many churches are staff-driven, are hirelings, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that to some degree, but this church particularly is raising up leaders to do the work of the ministry. It's who we are as a church. Revelation 2, 4 through 5, that the church does not lose its first love. And this is a challenge for us as a church. What is our first love? Is Jesus central to all that we do and all that we think? Has Jesus moved out of that central place in our world and our life? Because for me, completing the Great Commission and exalting Jesus as Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, and Coming King is a big part of who I am as an individual and as a pastor. We have to keep Jesus central in our life. We have to keep Jesus as our first love. Matthew 6, 18 says this, that we need to pray that we will trust Jesus to build his church. This is his church. It's not based just on numbers. It's based on depth. So when we read the New Testament, it's very clear that God wants to build his church deep and wide. He wants to add numbers to the church, but only in the sense that there's depth to Christians that attend that church. And my heart for each of us is that we know the word of God and we have the word of God in us and in our heart and in our life so we can maintain and walk out the things that we need to do in our world. So a word and power church puts prayer and worship central. It's also our seventh core value as a church that we put prayer and worship and all that we do. It's that vital and it's that important to us. I wanna transition for a moment. There's been a lot of things that have happened here over the last month as the church. If you're unaware of it, this past Wednesday, our church flooded again. Uh, Mackenzie and I have been working pretty feverishly all week up to last night, just making sure that you could come and have church here today. There's a lot that's happening in our world right now. There's a lot that's happening in your life right now. And what I want to do this morning is I wanna call us to a season of prayer. I wanna call us not only collectively this morning to pray, but I want you as a church to stand up and rise up and pray even more fervently than you ever have. So there's four stations set up around the room and at each of those stations, there's a focus area that we want you to look at. So the first station is we're calling you to pray for this house. The second station, which is to my left, we want you to pray for these generations that are represented in this house. The third station, which is to my left, but in the back, we want you to pray over our leadership. And the fourth station that we want you to pray at, which is in the back to my right, is our witness as Christians. In each of those four areas, there's a key scripture that we want you to look at. There's also a piece of paper that goes into a little bit more detail about how we'd like to pray. And this is how I'd like to go for the next 15 or 20 minutes as a church. I want to invite you, wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, to participate in this prayer time. If that means you're going to go to one of those stations and spend five minutes in each one of those stations and pray for each one of those, I invite you to do that. If you feel more, this is more a contemplative time and you'd like to remain at your seat and pray, we're going to keep the slide up on the screen behind me. If you feel burdened to walk around this church today, through the classrooms and upstairs and around the parking lot. It's a beautiful day out. I'd love you to do that. Please just come back in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm calling us to pray because I think there's an urgency, but there's also a great anticipation in me, an expectancy that God is stirring this church up for what's ahead for her. And I will not be dismayed and I will not back down, but I need you to stand with me in this moment to pray through what the Lord has put on my heart to pray through. We are right at the precipice of breaking through church. I believe this with all my heart and with all my spirit. And I'm calling you as a church, as a congregation, to step up with me and to pray during this season. So I've asked the worship team to come up. They're gonna 
just worship in the background. You certainly can hang out at your chair and read these scriptures and look through these free key points. It's fine. Or you can make your way around to the four stations. Or you, uh, at the same time, you can grab one of those sheets of paper and walk around the building. I'd ask you to come back in about 15 minutes. So about 10 after 11. And we're going to have two last worship songs and I'll close with a benediction. So this is our service today. I want to encourage you and I want to uh, employ you and I want to equip you to step out and to begin to pray for this church. So I want you to take it beyond today, but today is to stir us up as a congregation. So I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm going to release you to go do whatever you need to do, whatever the Lord has put on your heart, and however you want to pray today. You can pray by yourself. You can pair up with someone. You can grab a group and go to the stations together. Whatever the Lord is doing in you, that's fantastic. I just want you to participate in a way that will change you and will change this church. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you that the word and power church knows how to worship you in spirit and truth. That you've called this church to worship you individually in a way that transforms the world around us. God, I thank you that you've equipped us with the ability to pray using your scripture. I thank you, Lord, that there is power in the praying your word over a place. So I pray, Lord, that you would stir this church up to speak life during this season, to speak life over the building, to speak life over the leadership, to speak life over the generations that are here, and to speak life over our witness. Lord, you're stirring this church up to go beyond its four walls, to bring your kingdom to Woodenville, to this state, to this nation, and around the world. Lord, would you cause today to be a moment that we all look back and remember. God, thank you for today. We give you glory for today. In Jesus' name. Please make your way around, and we'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. Pray.
days now forever Christ our King Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit now with us Every moment All our days God be praised Oh God be praised Starry hosts are called out by name. 
will shout for joy I will raise my voice Hallelujah to the Lamb You are steadfast Steadfast You are steadfast Shine forever Your name is high